Good morning. I'm Reverend Christian DeMent, pastor at Santee United Methodist Church, and I'm greeting you from my office in my own home. These are some interesting times. I pray that in this period of worship, we can feel connected with one another while we physically can't be together. I know that this is a time of feeling anxious and concerned, a little fearful and uncertain about the future. As we pray together and we seek God's guidance through this time, I pray that we can find a way forward, a way to stay connected with one another, even though we are required to stay at our homes and, and not to be gathering in groups, but also recognize the ways that we can serve one another, to be God's people for our community. I believe this is a crucial time for the church, to be a vital presence, to show the world that Christ is alive through our actions and our speech that support one another in this uncertain time. Truly, we need to be a light in the darkness, and I pray we can find that light in this time of worship and have a sense of connected spirit together, even though we are apart. And so, to go into some of our rituals that we find comfort and peace in, I invite you to join me in an attitude of prayer as we begin worship together. Holy God, from the depths of our sorrow and from the abundance of our joy, we praise you this morning. We praise you with voices separate and unique. We praise you with one voice as your children. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight today. Amen. So now, let us begin with our scripture and message. As many of you know, we've been uh, walking through this season of Lent, uh, meditating on this word Selah that we find in the Psalms. It serves as kind of a musical break or or a time of pause or breath as we read the Psalms. It's interesting that in this time, in this Sabbath time that we are spending apart from one another, this word Salah really takes on a new meaning. Indeed, this is a time of taking a break from one another, maybe even taking a break from the busyness of our lives and reconsider what is most important to us. It's our relationships with one another. It's our relationship with God. And so I pray as we read this scripture from the psalm, Psalm number 95, we hear these words and, and recognize that it is important to continue to worship. Worship is not about a place or a program. It is the way that we, we offer our praise to God and we join our hearts together wherever we might be to lift up the, the word of the Lord and to give thanks for all that God has given us. So I'm going to invite you to uh, participate with me from your home. Uh, let us read this psalm together. I'll read uh, uh, some of the parts and then uh, the other parts that are in bold as you follow along in this video uh, are times for you to lift up your voice and to read the psalm with me. Let us see how this goes and try it out. Uh, I, I, I encourage you to have some fun with it. So let us read together Psalm 95. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great ruler above all gods, in whose hand are the depths of the earth and also the heights of the mountains. The sea belongs to God who made it and the dry land which God formed it. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For the Lord is our God and we are the people of God's pasture and the sheep of God's hand. It's interesting that our lectionary provides for us in this unique time, this psalm that calls us to worship. We may be asking with all of these concerns and uncertainty, with the fear of the coronavirus and the isolation we feel in our practicing social distancing, what do we have to thank God for anyway? What should we be worshiping during this time? Well, we worship because it's so difficult to see God's light in this dim time. It was the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 28 that we read that after Jesus' resurrection, the disciples saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Even though they were in doubt of what was before them, they worshipped faithfully. They believed that God can and does do great things even in the darkest hour. While it's true that this is a a most challenging time, a time that none of us have ever seen before. I thank God for giving us this word Silah that we've been focusing on throughout this season. 
I can't help but to feel that God was preparing us for this unwanted break in our lives and that God is calling us to take this moment to be in quiet reflection and then give profound thanks to God for a gift that he has given us, this gift of worship. How wonderful it is that although we're advised not to get together, we have developed these tools that allow us to be together even though we are apart. This moment right now reminds us that worship is not defined by a place that we're in or the rituals we have included with it, but instead it's a simple moment to turn our eyes towards God, to open our hands with our palms open and humbly say, thank you, Lord, for what you have provided us and for what you are showing us in the midst of challenge and despair. Now, many of you have seen the viral video of this small community in Siena, it's near Rome, uh, the people of Siena were asked to quarantine themselves, not asked, but just ordered to quarantine themselves, to stay out of contact from one another for an extended period of time. There was no shopping, no going to school, no playing in the parks or going out to dinner or for drinks. As they sat at their homes alone, many began to feel extremely isolated, fearful and anxious from being alone and disconnected, concerned for the future and the collapse of community. Although they were in their homes and their apartments, they started to go to their windows and look across and to see other people in their windows. And it took one person to just lift their voice and start to sing a song. The song that they sung was, Don't Give Up. And as they sung that song, another voice added to their song and another voice down the street, and another voice from another window. And all of a sudden, the whole community in their individual apartments from their individual balconies were singing together, Don't Give Up. Although we are in our homes and apartments, unable to lift our voices together in one place, we do come together this morning to worship together, to lift our voices together in one heart, Loving God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our minds, with all of our spirits. Trusting in the Lord's strength. Strengthening us. Putting us on the right path. Keeping us both safe and healthy.